Assalamu alaikum students I welcome you all to a new session 2020-21 How were your Eid holidays I enjoyed my holidays and I'm sure you all must had a lot of fun too Students let's begin our today's lesson I want you all to please bring your SST books and pencils open unit 1 Karachi write day and date on top of the page number 2 As you all must have understood that today's lesson is on one of our beautiful cities Karachi which is also known as city of lights because of its liveliness There are many beautiful and historical places in Karachi for the tourists to visit Are you ready to know more about the city So let's begin our lesson Learning outcomes In this unit students will be able to find directions on map with the help of a compass relate facts about Karachi explain the importance of imports and exports to the economy of pakistan describe life in the third desert and compare it with life in karachi understand problems of living in a big city students first of all we will discuss compass and map of pakistan i know we have already discussed these in one of our previous lessons this is going to be the reinforcement of those concepts because it is very important for you all to learn how to use compass to find directions on a map Now can you tell me what is a compass? Yes, compass is a tool used for finding directions that is north, south, east and west. You can see a picture of 8 point compass on your screen. On the top is north, at the bottom is south, to the right is east and to the left is west. All those places which cover the area between north and east their direction will be northeast. In the same way places covering area between south and east their direction will be southeast between west and south their direction will be southwest in the same way places covering area between north and west their direction will be northwest Here you can see a map of Pakistan with a compass on the right with the help of this compass we are going to find directions of places on the map If you look at this map of Pakistan you can see four provinces with their provincial capitals and the neighboring countries Students if you have to find the direction of Punjab you can see that it's starting from north and coming down towards east that's why its direction is northeast Sindh is at the bottom of the map so its direction is south Balochistan is starting from south and going up towards west so its direction is southwest Now look at KPK it is on the top and its direction is north Let's discuss our neighboring countries. India is towards east, Iran is towards west. Afghanistan is between north and west, so its direction is northwest. And China is between north and east, so its direction is northeast. Students, have you ever heard about FATA? What does it stand for? It stands for Federally Administered Tribal Areas. It stretches from north to south along with the Pak Afghan border. FATA is divided into 7 agencies and you must have heard about them Khyber, Khurram, Aurangzeb, Mohammad, Bajor, North Waziristan and South Waziristan. Although there are 6 additional small pockets of tribal areas known as frontier regions. Here I have given you a task that is to revise the map of Pakistan in 8 direction compass for discussion in the Zoom class. Students it's activity time and I'm sure you're going to love it. Here I have given you two very interesting activities related to compass. Please click on the given links and enjoy these videos. First activity is about finding directions with the help of sunrise and sunset. In the second activity you can easily make a compass at home by watching this video and I am sure that you all would love to bring your compass in SST Zoom class. Let's start our word bank. Here I have given you pictures with these words for your convenience. Listen to the pronunciation of these words and I'll tell you meanings of difficult words. The first word is industry. Second word is Karachiites. People who live in Karachi are known as Karachiites. Third word is mangrove forest. Mangrove forests have trees that live along tropical coastlines as you can see in the picture. Fourth word is arches. What is an arch? An arch is a vertical curved structure as you can see in the picture it is curved from top and hollow from inside. Fifth word is erosion. Please look at this picture carefully. Erosion is the process by which the surface of the earth gets worn down. Sixth word is delta. Delta is an area of low flat land shaped like a triangle where river divides into several smaller rivers before flowing into the sea.
Seventh word is erode. Erode means gradually destroyed or gradually worn away. Eighth word is stag. What is a stag? The thin strip of land above the arch which is worn away by rain and wind and falls into the sea. This bit of land into the sea is called a stag. Ninth word is sheltered. Sheltered means covered or protected. Tenth word is inlet. Inlet is narrow opening through which water flows into an area of land. Eleventh word is import. Import means buying goods and services from other countries. Twelfth word is export. Export means selling goods and services to other countries. I hope you all must have learned pronunciation and meanings of these words. Let's discuss some interesting facts about Karachi. You know that Karachi is the largest city of Pakistan. It is the main seaport of Pakistan. Karachi is capital city of Sindh province. It is one of the world's largest cities. Karachi is the main center of banking, industry and trade in Pakistan. It is called the city of lights due to its liveliness. People who live in Karachi are known as Karachiites. Karachi was the capital of Pakistan until 1960 when Islamabad was created as a new capital city. Students, have you ever visited Karachi? Do you know about the famous food of Karachi? Okay, who can tell me that which are the famous places in Karachi? You can google these questions and discuss in the Zoom class. Let's discuss the location of Karachi. Karachi is in the south of Pakistan on the coast of Arabian Sea as you can see in the map on your right. The land is mainly flat but there are some hills on the western and northern parts of the city. Two rivers flow through Karachi, the river Malir and the river Liari. Karachi harbour is in a sheltered bay in the southwest of the city. The word harbour means seaport and bay means body of water. There are dense mangrove forests and creeks in the southeast in the Indus River Delta. The word dense means thick, creeks means streams of water smaller than a river and the word delta we have already discussed in our word bank. The coast of Karachi. The word coast means seashore. To learn about different landforms, please look at this picture carefully. Karachi coast has low rocky cliffs and sandy beaches. Cliffs, caves and arches are formed by the erosion of the sea. What is a cliff? When the wave crash against the land due to which land is eroded, this process over a long period forms a steep landform called a cliff. Cave It is formed at the bottom of the cliff if it is weaker. It is basically a hole at the bottom of a cliff. Headland It is a land that juts out into the sea. Juts out means tilts, tilts into the sea. Arch Sometimes caves form on both sides of the headland. Each cave is eaten away by the wave and a hole forms all the way through the headland. This is called an arch. Stack over time, the thin strip of land above the arch is worn away by rain and wind. It falls into the sea. The bit of land left in the sea is called stack. Bay It is a sheltered coastal inlet. It has land on three sides. Climate of Karachi Karachi has fairly mild climate which means it does not have extreme weather conditions. The annual rainfall is quite low and it falls during the monsoon season from July to August. Winters which are from November to February are mild and dry. It is considered to be the best time to visit Karachi. So this is the time when most tourists visit Karachi. Summers which are from April to August are hot and humid. Temperatures ranges from 30 to 44 degrees centigrade. Let's discuss a very interesting fact. Here you can see picture of a green turtle. Sandspit beach is a nesting ground for green and olive ridley turtles. Both are endangered species and need protection. Students, is weather of Karachi and Rawalpindi same? What's the difference? Yes, winters in Karachi are mild and dry, but here in Rawalpindi winters are very cold and wet. The annual rainfall in Karachi is quite low, but here in Rawalpindi, the rainfall is high. Students, now we are going to do exercise on page 5 on the book. 
please open page 5 of your book and keep pencils in your hands because you have to write answers of all these questions and you have to circle whatever will be asked first of all i'll explain you this chart which is telling you about average monthly temperatures and rainfall for karachi you can see names of months are written on the top from january to december and three rows are given on the left side the first row is telling you about average low temperature second is telling you about average high temperature and the third is telling you about rainfall Let's begin with the first row. In January, average low temperature was 13 degrees centigrade. In February, it was 14 degrees centigrade. In March, it was 19. April was 23. May was 26, and it continues like this till December. Come to second row. Average high temperature. This whole row is telling you about average high temperature. In January, average high temperature was 25 degrees centigrade. In February, it was 26. March was 29. April was 32. May was 34. June was 34, and July 33. And it continues in the same way. Last row is telling you about rainfall. In January rainfall was 13 mm in February it was 10 mm March was 8 April was 3 May was 3 June was 18 July was 85 August 61 and it continues like this till December Now with the help of this chart you are going to answer these questions First question is circle the month with the lowest average temperature in blue Row number 1 will tell you about average low temperature. Find answer from this row. Yes, it is January which has lowest average temperature that is 13 degrees centigrade. Please circle 13 here and write January in front of the question. Next question is circle the months with the highest average temperature in red. Second row is telling you about highest average temperature. Find answer from this row. Yes, it is May and June. There are two months which have highest average temperature that is 34 degree centigrade. You can circle both 34 here and write May and June in front of the question. Next question is circle the month with the highest average rainfall in green. The last row will tell you about this. Yes it is July which is 85 mm that is the highest rainfall Okay our last question is work out the annual yearly average rainfall I'll give you clue for this you will add up the rainfall for each month and divide the answer by 12 in this way you will get answer of this question we can discuss this question in zoom class The port of Karachi The port of Karachi is Pakistan's largest and busiest seaport. The port is in deep natural harbor. It has long sheltered channel for ships to move safely into the port. Many of Pakistan's imports and exports are handled by the port. What is the difference between imports and exports? Imports are goods and services that are bought from other countries whereas exports are goods and services that are sold to other countries. Students here you can see a task to do on the right side. What is the task you are supposed to read pages from 2 to 6 and revise the important points mentioned in the presentation for discussion in the Zoom class I'll ask questions from every student in the Zoom class so please come prepared Students here you can see three questions on your screens which you have to attempt Question number 1 is how a cliff is formed question number 2 is why is karachi considered to be the best time to visit in winters and the last question is explain the terms import and export you can easily answer these questions if you have listened to the presentation carefully i would suggest you before attempting them please go through the presentation again you can do this question answers in your last year second term social studies notebooks take screenshots and send in the google classroom for checking please make sure that your handwriting should be extremely neat and presentation of work should be excellent students here i'm going to end my lesson for today thank you so much for your cooperation and listening to the presentation patiently please go through the presentation carefully and note down your queries for discussion in the zoom class you all should come prepared i am reminding you that i will ask different questions related to this presentation from everyone as you all know that your new session has started everyone's participation in zoom and google classroom is must so please be regular allah hafiz